Angeles, and I am excited that people are actually waking up to this climate action plan scenario and our count. A lot of people are happy to have respectful, um, considerate neighbors. What is the future of transportation in Chapel Hill now that the light rail plan is gone? So, similar to before, we still desperately need to go forward with safe bicycle paths, increased walkability in town. One of the things that distinguishes me from some of the other candidates is I don't necessarily want to increase a bunch of additional parking downtown. I'd rather see us build park and rides and rap bus rapid transit. Because the light rail project's not moving forward, there are, are tax dollars from the sales tax revenues that we can now do use to implement more hours. And we did a short range transit plan to see where that need was. So more weekend hours, more regular service going on, expanding the routes. So we're excited about that and we're excited about moving forward with options on how we connect to Durham and other municipalities and other counties. Should students live off campus? And if so, how would you protect them while balancing the needs of long-term residents? Um, to be honest, I'm really disappointed that campus has um, decided to cut a lot of their on-campus housing and push students into what would normally be affordable housing for a lot of our workers, a lot of our teachers, other people are now going to have to compete for that affordable housing and we already don't have enough and there's a huge wait list for that affordable housing. So I really wish that the university would do its part to also work with us to provide some affordable units for our people who are living on 60% or 80% of AMI or even lower. I've lived here a very long time. We love our students. They bring such a wonderful energy and perspective and actually a lot of volunteer hours. Um, our economy thrives better when our students are here. So we love that integration of students into the community. But we've been meeting with the university and I've been pushing for, and we're gonna do it this year, we're gonna do a student needs housing assessment together. How does that look? Where do students want to be? Um, what kind of housing do they want? And we know that they like to be on the corridor lines and that works for us as well too to make sure people are connected back and forth and don't need a car in town, but also have the ability to get other places through the greenways. So we're looking at all that and working together. UNC houses about 50% of the student population, which is pretty in incredible for a university at size, but there's also some student needs on the campus as well. Uh, do you believe in climate change? And if so, what should be the town's first steps when the election is over? Right, I'm a long time environmentalist, and I'm excited that people are actually waking up to this climate action plan scenario, and our council voted to make it our number one priority going forward. So it's not about the election, it's about doing something now. We had the students today with the climate strike out on Peace and Justice Plaza, and I'm so proud that they're getting involved and being part of this. I met with some UNC um, town gov student government to talk about how we can work together. Uh, the town has put out a sustainability website because I talk about citizens in the community want to know what, what's going on, what can they do, what makes a difference, what's the town doing, and how do they encourage more of that changing behavior so that we reduce our carbon footprint. And yes, our response to address our carbon emissions should at least first be doing our part. And in addition to that, probably supporting additional communities around the world to enhance the technology. But first, if we can do at least our share, because right now per capita, the US and especially the Southeast is the worst um, carbon emitter and greenhouse gas emitter on the entire planet. And so yeah, as a progressive community that knows and has some awareness of what science has proven for us, we desperately need to actually take real action and invest in that. UNC has been the center of protests over the last year. How should student protests be handled and what's the town's role in that? Yeah, I thought this was a great question. I'm, I'm just, personally, I'm proud that students stand up, show up, and speak out on things that are wrong. It gives us the energy and motivates those of us who've been here a while to rethink and to take action. Um, the protests on Peace and Justice Plaza, that's what it's for. It is close to streets though, so we want to make sure that everyone's safe when they're protesting. Um, so we do a lot of work ahead of time and being notified that people are getting ready to do something is really, really helpful. Student protests in my ideal situation should be embraced and supported. Our police force should be there to, uh, ideally we wouldn't have the police force unless there's really um, critical issues coming up. The police force should be there to take um, people bringing weapons on campus, off of campus, and make sure that they can never do that again, bring those weapons, um, and definitely prosecute those people to the full extent of the law to make sure that they know that that kind of thing can't happen. I was incredibly disappointed that 
the one opportunity the police had to actually do something that would support the people and the protesters, they like neglected their responsibilities. Should Confederates be allowed to rally either on campus or in the town? Um, I'm also a canvasser right now with the ACLU, and I um, am aware that in Charlottesville even, for some of the nonviolent Confederate protesters, they still allowed that um, freedom of speech. So ACLU, I think, defended some people in Charlottesville um, who were not nonviolent but still exercising that freedom of speech. And I think it would take a lot more deep understanding to, yeah, before we could consider stopping these kinds of, yeah, like doing a ban on hate speech is something I would love to see a world where we didn't have hate speech, we didn't have people that had these views. Um, but yeah, to completely silence that freedom of speech could have really terrible ramifications in the long term. So. That's part of that equation of uh, respecting the First Amendment, people's right to come and say their opinion. Uh, we've never distinguished between people coming from outside our community or people within our community. We want them to do it in a respectful manner. We want them to not do things that make other people feel unwelcome. That's really hard given today's world with the Confederate issues going on. I will tell you, um, once we learned about the Jefferson Memorial Davis Jefferson Davis Memorial Highway marker there, it took a year to work through the system to find out how to remove it because in our view as a town, that did not feel like a welcoming, um, inviting, and it wasn't something we wanted there. But no one really was able to discern whose piece of property it was on. <laughs> Once we got the go-ahead from the Attorney General and we, I actually worked it through the system and got permission from the Attorney General to discern that the town had the right to remove it, it was gone that night. We got the information, we got it out of there. Um, I wrote a letter to the Chancellor about Silent Sam and the Board of Trustees and the Board of Governors that it's not something that re represents our community and it makes people feel unwelcome. It makes people feel badly and that's not what we want for our community. If elected, what do you think the town should do about the Confederate presence in our community and do you believe the town's actions and responses so far have been adequate? Yeah, so again, I'll stand on that First Amendment. We really respect everyone's right to speak. Uh, we work collaboratively. We plan these things out together with um, UNC Public Safety, with the Sheriff's Department of Orange County, with Carborough. We want to make sure everyone's working together. We also have a community policing advisory board that meets with our police department, its citizens and other community members who want to come together and talk. And we, they debrief the activities as well that's gone on. They've made some good suggestions. We have followed that. Um, these events tend to be very, very fluid. We usually know they're coming. We don't always know how many folks are coming from, and it's almost always from outside our community. Um, that's the frustrating part. It's like those aren't our community values, but we, if we say we protect First Amendment rights, then we have to do that. Know that when Chapel Hill was on the campus for that protest, they were under the direction of the state and UNC police because that was UNC police territory. Um, I think. From what I've heard, the way that UNC police were leading that and dealing with those issues was unacceptable. They were like overly violent towards one group and neglected to address the other group. So there was an unacceptable bias and unequal treatment, which we need to work to address and make sure that anything going forward is handled professionally in the right way something I need to continue to explore and hopefully we can communicate with more community members to find even better solutions that will improve the situation going forward. What should Chapel Hill look like 20 years from now? Chapel Hill 20 years from now ideally will be a place that people can bicycle safely with their families, um, enjoy walking around town, still have the green space or even maybe restore some more of the green space that happened was here before, while at the same time creating um, intelligent, smart city designs that will allow for higher density development along public transportation routes so people can like quickly get to and from different sides of town easily on public transportation and not create massive traffic.
I'm excited about what Chapel Hill could look like 20 years from now. We've really been focusing on building our entrepreneurship community here and ecosystem where we have an amazing amount of spin-offs coming off UNC campus and from the community and with our launch incubator we've been able to nurture those. When I came into office only five of those startups have stayed here and now we're having great traction. We've had over 30. Uh, we're providing more office space, more resources, more connectivity in an ecosystem instead of just incubating for the first six months we're now giving a pathway and we're we've spread the message we want you to stay here so we've been actively involved in making that happen and what that does for this community is if you're a student or faculty member and you've generated this wonderful company we want you to stay we want to help that and provide some jobs and internships for UNC students to be here who's your favorite UNC basketball player player past or present <laughs> um that's interesting because my husband follows it really, really closely, and I really loved um, the work of the team last year after they lost some key starting players that they pulled together to work together as, as a team, um, and I see that happening this year coming forward as well. Um, I looked at the list of players. I don't know them as well, so I'm not sure I can pick a favorite, but I'm encouraged because it seems to be that spirit of working together, um, which I think is more important for a team than having one superstar out there. Uh, it's fun to watch. I get excited and riled up, and then we have bets with other mayors across the country when we get into the tournament. But I always talk about that we have a team. We don't have just a star player. We have a team of star players. I have not watched very much UNC basketball recently, so I would have to go all the way back to like that first famous player, who is um, that was essentially the last time I was really fully invested in um, basketball was when Michael Jordan was playing, so yeah, that would definitely be a player that I look up to. I should know more players right now, but maybe this year I'll get more into it again.